A piercing autumn wind swept through the heart of the city, rattling the windows of the Smoothie King restaurant on its busiest evening. The store stood nestled amidst the neon lights and towering buildings, a beacon for health enthusiasts and passers-by alike. For five years, years, Aukat called this place my second home, blending the finest fruits into refreshing concoctions for customers who barely noticed the sweat on my brow. But on this eerie night, my loyalty would be put to the ultimate test. My name is Max, and Ax never expected anything unusual to happen in this modest corner of the city. Smoothie King was the epitome of health and vitality. It was a place where people sipped on their chyle-infused, protein-packed elixirs while discussing fitness regimens, their eyes blissfully unaware of the sinister truths concealed within these vibrant walls. The story begins on a night that seemed like any other. The clock had just juck Shesson, 30 p.m., the peak of our evening rush. Customers swarmed around the glass counter like bees to honey, perusing the colorful menu boards. Laughter and the hum of blenders filled the air as my colleagues and I hustled to meet the relentless demand for smoothies. It was a high-energy atmosphere, one that had never left room for dread. But as I glanced through the blur of activity, something strange caught my eye. It was a man, standing alone at the far end of the store, studying a framed picture on the wall. That wasn't unusual in itself. Many people admired the local artwork we displayed. But what struck me as odd was his attire. He wore a long, heavy coat, even though the weather outside was unseasonably warm. And he was staring at the picture with a peculiar intensity, as if he had unearthed a hidden treasure map. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something about this man was amiss, something that didn't belong in our healthy haven. As I continued blending smoothies, I glanced at him periodically. His unwavering fixation on the picture made my skin crawl. Minutes passed, and a man finally approached the counter. His beady eyes met mine as I wiped sweat from my brow. One of those, he muttered, pointing to the menu. His voice was cold, mechanical, devoid of any warmth. It sent shivers down my spine, but I maintained my composure. I prepared his smoothie without a word, and as I handed it to him, our fingers brushed. An electric shock seemed to pass between us, and I instinctively withdrew my hand, shaken. The man took the smoothie and walked to an empty corner, where he sat down, his gaze never leaving the picture on the wall. My co-workers and I exchanged uneasy glances. There was something about this man that was utterly unsettling. As the evening wore on, the restaurant slowly emptied. The man remained seated, sipping his smoothie methodically. I couldn't help but steal glances at him between blending and serving. He seemed to grow paler, as if the very life was being drained from him by that picture. By 9.30 p.m., we were about to close shop. My co-workers and I began cleaning up hoping that the strange man would soon leave. But when I looked over, he was gone. The smoothie sat half-finished on the table, untouched for the last hour. Confused and anxious, I asked my manager if he had seen the man leave. He replied with a puzzled expression, What man? It was then that I realized something even stranger. The picture the man had been staring at was missing from the wall. It was an abstract painting by a local artist, a swirl of vibrant colors that had been a fixture in our store for years. But now, the frame hung empty, as if it had never been there. I couldn't sleep that night. The image of the man and the missing painting haunted my thoughts. 
It was like a splinter in my mind, digging deeper with every passing moment. I had to find out who that man was and what he had done with the painting. The next morning, I arrived at work early. I knew I had to investigate this mystery before anyone else got involved. My manager had the surveillance footage, and after some persuasion, he reluctantly showed it to me. The tape revealed the man's arrival and his unsettling behavior. But as I watched, something else sent a chill down my spine. When the man had left, the tape showed him walking out the door. But the moment he stepped outside, he simply vanished. It was as if he had never existed. My heart pounded in my chest. This was beyond strange. It was impossible. I had to find out more about that painting. Perhaps it held some clue to this bizarre incident. I reached out to the local artist who had created the missing painting. Her name was Eliza, and she was known for her eccentric style and reclusive nature. It took some effort, but I managed to track down her contact information and set up a meeting at her studio. Her studio was tucked away in an old warehouse on the outskirts of town. As I entered, the smell of paint and turpentine filled the air. Eliza greeted me with a warm smile, her eyes twinkling with creativity. Max, you're here about the painting, aren't you? She said as she led me deeper into her cluttered studio. I nodded, my heart pounding. Yes, the one that used to hang in Smoothie King. It's gone, and I need to know everything about it. Eliza's expression grew serious. She led me to a small corner where a stack of paintings rested. She pulled one out and handed it to me. It was a smaller version of the missing painting, similar in style and colors. This is the original, she said. The one that hung in your store was a replica. The original was commissioned by a wealthy collector who wanted to keep it a secret. My mind raced. Why the secrecy? Eliza sighed. Because that painting has a history, Max. A dark one. It's called the Whispering Void. The collector who commissioned it believed it had the power to reveal hidden truths, but at a great cost. I shivered. What kind of cost? Eliza's gaze grew distant. People who possessed it often went mad. They claimed to hear whispers, voices from the void. Some even disappeared without a trace. That's why I agreed to make replicas for public display. I didn't want anyone to suffer because of it. I felt a lump in my throat. Do you know who the Collector was? Eliza hesitated. I don't, but he was old, very old. I only met him once, and he was obsessed with the painting. He said it held the answers to questions that had haunted him for a lifetime. I left Eliza's studio with more questions than answers. The missing painting, the whispering void, was indeed a curse. It had driven the strange man to obsession, and now it had vanished, taking him with it. But what secrets could it possibly hold that were worth the price of one's sanity? As days turned into weeks, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The unease grew with each passing moment. I started hearing faint whispers in the back of my mind, like distant voices carried on the wind. They were impossible to decipher, but they gnawed at my sanity. One evening, as I was closing up the store, I saw the man again. He was standing outside, just beyond the glass door, staring at me with those cold, lifeless eyes. Panic surged through me as I locked the door and called the police. 
but when they arrived, there was no sign of the man. It was as if he had once again vanished into thin air. I couldn't take it any longer. I had to find out more about the man and the painting, even if it meant delving into the darkness that had consumed him. My research led me to an old local newspaper article. It mentioned a wealthy recluse named Harold Thornton who had owned the Whispering Void. He had disappeared without a trace, leaving behind a mansion that had been abandoned for decades. I decided to visit the mansion, hoping to find clues about the painting and the strange man who had haunted my thoughts. The mansion was a crumbling relic, hidden away in a forgotten part of the city. The air inside was thick with dust and the stench of decay. As I explored the mansion's decaying rooms, I stumbled upon a hidden study. Inside, I found a journal belonging to Harold Thornton. It contained rambling entries about the painting and its whispers. He wrote of a dark presence that had taken hold of him, driving him to the brink of madness. I couldn't tear my eyes away from the journal. It was as if the painting's curse had infected me too. I felt a compulsion to find the missing painting and return it to its rightful place. But before I could leave the mansion, I heard footsteps echoing in the hallway outside the study. My heart pounded as I hid behind a tattered curtain. The footsteps grew closer, and then I saw him, the strange man. He entered the Stustus, a size wild and unfocused. He muttered to himself as he searched the room, his gaze fixated on the journal. My breath caught in my throat as he picked it up and began to read. I must find it, he whispered. I must find the whispering void. I watched in horror as the man's behavior grew increasingly erratic. He tore pages from the journal and crumpled them into his pockets. His eyes were no longer empty but filled with a manic intensity. Then, as suddenly as he had appeared, the man turned and left the study, leaving me trembling behind the curtain. I knew I had to act fast. The man was obsessed with finding the missing painting, and I was the only one who knew its true location. But I couldn't return it to him. I had to protect the world from the curse of the whispering void. As I made my way back to the restaurant, I felt the weight of the journal in my backpack. It contained the clues I needed to unravel the mystery and put an end to the curse. But it also carried the whispers, the haunting voices that now seemed to be a part of me. I knew that confronting the man and the dark secrets of the whispering void would not be easy. It would take all my courage and determination to break the curse and free myself from the relentless whispers that threatened to consume me. Little did I know that my journey into the heart of darkness was only just beginning, and that the true horror of the whispering void was yet to be revealed. <laughs>